Hi, I'm Bob Nystrom. Hi, this is Bo Dietl. Hey, this is Rich Big Daddy Salgado. Hi, this is Doc Gooden. You're watching Sports Biz. Sports Biz. Sports Biz with LD. Sports fans, this is Sports Biz with LD. Welcome to Sports Biz with LD. I'm your host, Larry Davis, brought to you by the Rampart Group for all your insurance needs and brought to you to also by 388, 388 Willis Avenue in Roslyn, New York. And of course, the Daily Blue. You can see us at dailyblue.com. You can go to sportsbizwithld.com. You can like us on Facebook, Sports Biz with LD. And of course, you could tweet me. Sports Biz with LT. I'd like to introduce to my left my co host for the day, John Anthony, A1 VIP Entertainment. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me. Good my, to see you as always. My pleasure to have you on. I know John a long time. John's business is a very unique business. So let's get right into it. John, tell us a little about you. How did you start? And then tell us about your that's business. A, that's a really good story, actually. Um, I was in uh, investment banking. In the late 90s, I was buying tickets for clients. This guy had a, an ad in a Newsday for Rangers Islanders. Called him up, came to my office. He has two great tickets, seven rows off the ice for $125. Thought that was an excellent price. I knew I had to get him for a client. Talking about on the ice, I'm calling Kenny Albert, who didn't call, so if he picks up, we'll go right to it. But go ahead on the That's ice. That's absolutely segue, fine. John. Absolutely. We'll fit him right in. So anyway, he comes to my office. Kenny. Yeah. Kenny Albert. Kenny's here. How are you? Welcome to the show. I had started the show. I missed you, but I'll bring you right on. The great Kenny Albert. How are you, Kenny? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I have John Anthony, who is a huge Ranger fan and season ticket holder, as my co-host for the day. Hey, Kenny. How are you, bud? I'm good, John. How are you? Oh, excellent. A little disappointed, but the Rangers outplayed everybody. They, they looked fantastic, and they definitely played above and beyond themselves. Well, it was a tremendous run, you know, to go seven games against Philadelphia and win that game 2-1 to one, and then come back from 3-1 down against Pittsburgh and defeat Montreal in six. It was, uh, uh, like I said, a great run, and, and it's really been a terrific three years when you look at uh, getting to the conference finals in 2012, second round, losing to a terrific Bruins team in 2013, and then uh, reaching the Stanley Cup final this year. Yeah, it was awesome. I, was, I had the pleasure of going to every home game. So did so did Kenny. <laughs> well, yes, he does. He goes to all the games, doesn't he? On the road as well. Yes, Kenny does. You know, Kenny. You know, you know Henrik Lundqvist, the king. I mean, you go to the games. The, the place is electric. You know, it goes back to when I think like your dad probably did the games with Eddie Jockham. And you know, what do you what do you think makes Henrik Lundqvist probably, if not the best goalie in the NHL? Well, I, I think it's a combination of things. Obviously, uh, the tremendous skills that he has, but also his work ethic. Uh, you know, I've, I've been to the practice rink in the summers. I remember a day in August a couple of years ago, and Lundqvist and Michael Delzado were the only two guys out on the ice, and you would have thought it was middle of the playoffs when, when you saw how hard he was working. So uh, he's a guy who uh, certainly cares about his profession. He's worked at it, you know, since a very young age, and um, he's had great success, you know, winning a gold medal and a silver medal at the Olympics, and and when you look at what he's done with the Rangers, they missed the playoffs seven straight years before his arrival in North America, and now they've made it to the postseason right. eight out of nine seasons, and, and yeah, awesome. you know, they've gotten out of the first round five times and gone to the conference final twice and now the Stanley Cup final. So um, he's certainly proven that he's one of the top goaltenders, not only in the NHL, but, but in the world. What impressed you most about the L.A. Kings, the way they play the Rangers? Tyler Toffoli, um, you know, they really, uh, with the trade 
for Gabrick and, and the addition of those two kids, it really changed their team. It, it balanced out the lines. They were able to move Carter to the middle and uh, certainly a well-deserved Stanley Cup for the second time in three years. Yeah, you know, I mean, they just seemed like when they wanted to turn it on, they turned it on. And the shots on goal was crazy, the amount of shots that Lunk was facing. It, it was just amazing. It was incredible, right? You know, Kenny, they just come at, and they just kept coming at the Rangers. It seemed like they would just turn it up at will. Absolute firepower. And, and when you think about it, you know, they were a goal away from being eliminated in the, in the conference final, Game 7 overtime against Chicago. They were down 0-3 to San Jose in the first round. Uh, mm -hmm. They had to win three game sevens on the road, so you talk about resiliency. An NHL team uh, never did some of the things that the Kings did in this year's playoffs. Right, you know, everyone kept saying that the Rangers are the team of destiny. It really seemed like the Kings. You know, right now you're calling from Cleveland. You know, I mean, you do so much. You're with the Rangers. You're with Fox. You do the NFL. You do baseball. Boy, your career is everywhere, Kenny. It's really exciting. Well, it's, it's been a whole lot of fun and, and very fortunate, you know, to have great bosses at, at MSG and Fox at NBC that allow me to go to the schedule a little bit. But uh, had some time off this week, and like you said, now in Cleveland for the Indians Tigers game on Fox tomorrow. Is hockey your favorite sport? It, it was growing up. Um, as far as you know, working, um, I always say it's like asking which kid you like better because I love them all. Whether it's football season, hockey season, baseball season. Um, you know, there, there, there are so many positives to all of them. So, uh, again, very fortunate to be involved in all three. How come you're not doing basketball, Kenny? What's going on with that? Make it all four. Right. Well, I've done some basketball. I've done a lot of college basketball, and, and I've filled in on mixed games for MSG. So uh, I haven't done as much basketball as the other sports, but, but I've certainly been involved. Kenny, it's really a pleasure to have you. I appreciate you taking some time. I know you told me that you're going to have to uh, jump off and uh, you have a meeting. Thanks again. I appreciate you coming on the show. We will definitely get in touch with you in the future. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kenny. Take care, Kenny. Have a good one. Kenny Albert, you know, what I want to do is what we're going to do before Kenny came on. I wanted to play his great call, the Rangers Canadians winning that game seven, one nothing, and going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Let's hear it. We're headed to the Stanley Cup Finals. They defeat the Montreal Canadiens in Game Six by the score of one nothing. Rangers off the bench. The mob, Henrik Lundqvist. The Rangers are headed to the finals. Great moment. Michael tweeted out to me: "The Rangers have one more hill to climb." Wow. What a feeling. You know, some, you get the goosebumps, John. I know you were at that game. How, how did you feel when you... Let me tell you, I know what it means when these players say they can't speak when they hold a cup or they win the cup. That game, the emotions ran right through your body. Just knowing that they were going on to the Stanley Cup, the chills, the electricity in the building was insane. It's nothing I've ever felt. You know, Until sitting next 94. to you, I can see you. You know what I mean? Like, oh, right was, now, I, it was I see just, it. Uh, there was tears of joy. I couldn't even talk to my wife on the phone. Well, a lot of like they won, they won. They won. That, that's, uh, you know, it happens a lot. She's like, "What? I can't hear you." I was like, hey, "They won." <laughs> what are you calling her for? You're in the stadium. You know, you're not gonna call her. She's watching well, she on TV. She's actually calling me. Oh. <laughs> I that's think she wanted a score update. To be honest, uh, that's what you gotta love about anyone <laughs> entertainment, man. You take every phone call. You never say like, "I'm surprised you turned your phone off now." You would take a call in the middle of this. Yeah, well, you know what? I don't want to disrupt you, Larry. Well, that's very nice of you. I appreciate that. No problem. Some no. people say it's all about business. I like when I get in the middle of it. I could use an hour off. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back. I'm sorry for rudely interrupting nah, you about when Kenny called in. Uh, that's, that's what happens in live TV. So let's get back to how you started. You were telling us about on the ice and the tickets, uh, and let's get back to your story. So this guy, Steve, comes into my office with these two tickets for the Ranger Islander game at the Coliseum. There was section 67, row G. I remember the exact seats. Seven and eight was the seat numbers, and this was back in 97. I bought the tickets, I called my broker who I was dealing with at the time. He wanted $350 for those seats. I was like, wow, $125, $350, well, that's a big spread. Something's in there for me. So I asked him what else he had in his bag and he pulls out a stack of Knicks Bulls. And this was of course when Michael Jordan was on the team. Wow. And you know, when he came into town, it was a sellout and it was electric in the building. And I knew I was gonna need tickets for that. So I, I asked him what he had. He pulls out a stack, 50 seats in section 325. I called my broker. I said, Greg, what do you got for the Knicks Bulls, section 300s in the corners? 
for the December 26th game. He tells me I got row D, $375 a ticket. I was like, wow, well, I'm going to need eight of those. That's going to be costly. Steve, what do you want for those tickets? He tells me 125 I was in the investment banking world. That's a big spread. You don't get spreads like that very often. So my next question immediately out of my mouth was, Greg, can you use any tickets? And back in the day, the first one who talks after you put the bait out loses. I had a stopwatch on my desk, so I hit it. 45 seconds. I thought he hung up on me. I hear a little paper shuffling. I'm like, is he there? And I, I can talk. I don't really like to shut up. And I was Really? <laughs> I'm chomping at the bit. I'm like, where'd he go? Is he there? And I hear the papers rush, ruffling. And then finally he gets back on after 45 seconds and he says, how many have? 50. Hit the watch again. 15 seconds goes by. What do you want for him? Well, listen, I'm not greedy, Greg. You want, you're selling them for 375. I'll take 275. You make a C note, I make a C note. C note we'll for all you out there is $100 just in case, you didn't know. Back in the day terms. So he goes, I'll tell you what. I'll give you 250. I'll take them all. I was like, sold. Right hand to God. I fired everyone in my office within a week, closed down my shop, and became a ticket broker. I bought everything in the guy's bag. I didn't care what was in it. He had stuff I've never even heard of. And I just bought the whole bag, and I started it with about $11,000. Wow. I, I love those stories. You know, God bless happened. America, man. That's what it's all about. Timing. Well, you know, the other things is besides tickets, you're all about meet and greets and mm -hmm. entertainment. And I know that you had sent me some photos and whatever I did, I messed up. So I wasn't able to get them on. But, you know, there's, uh, you sent me a lot. So let's talk about some of the famous people that you've been able to hook people up. Everybody out there, you could always go to A1 Entertainment, go to his website. You can call him. What's the phone number? 888-957-8499. Say it again. 888-957-8499. All you have to do is call and you can meet everyone. So let's talk about one of the, not, let's go sports, let's go entertainment. Justin Bieber. I can get, my kids can meet Justin Bieber through you, through yes. A1 Entertainment? Yes. My daughter's a huge Justin Bieber fan. Oh, I'm sure. Just have no other kids. Yeah, she met him sure. twice, actually. She's actually in the movie of the movie he filmed at Madison Square Garden. And so am I and my other daughter. Um, back in, that was 2010, I believe. And it's the uncut version in the, at the end. You'll see he comes out and says hello to my daughter. So people can go online and meet Justin Bieber. Now another mm -hmm. photo that you had sent me, you and Derek Jeter. That was, uh, a dumb, I did Derek Jeter a few times. Um, I had a, a client who had a great kid who does really well in school. He wanted to give him something special for his birthday, and we got him in the Yankee dugout for an hour. In the Yankee dugout. In the dugout. Yankee dugout. So not only did he get to meet Derek Jeter, he got to meet all the other players, and let me tell you, the kid was blown away. He wanted entertainment. I mean, I can keep going. I mean, there's no one, I guess there's no one you can't. Rock and roll, you know, entertainment, comedy. sports, comedy. One call does it all. Gotta love that. Uh, yep. We'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, so on the show, uh, as you know me a long time, there's always a lot of things on my mind. Some I like, some I don't like. I got to tell you, yesterday, Pat Riley, as we call him here in New York, Pat the Rat, because mm -hmm. it's around 20 years ago today, yesterday, right around this week, yeah. that Pat faxed in his resignation on the Knicks. Okay, that's why we call him Pat the Rat. <laughs> so, and I love Pat. That's the one thing I didn't love that he did. He's as a, a matter of fact, I was at John Starks' uh, Charity Casino Night, and there's all Pat Riley guys. Anthony Mason was there, and Herb Williams was there, and, and Oak was there, and, you know, you think about Pat. So we have some clips from the press conference from yesterday. Got to tell you, I love the way Pat Riley, the way no one else does today in sports. Let's start out at the beginning of the press conference, and I'll call this little segment from Pat Riley. I'm pissed. Let's hear it. <laughs> you want to trend something? I'm pissed, okay? So go ahead. Get it out there. I don't know. Whose iPhone's making a sound? Anyone's? Go. He's pissed. You he like that? He has a right to be. He has a right to be. He's going right after the media. He doesn't like it. He's got a point to make. Again, you know, in today's day and age, John, as you know, it's not about X and, X and O's. You need to manage 
people. You're a boss. You're a manager. Absolutely. That's why all businesses, yours and everyone else's, you really are the head coach, the manager. Let's see what he says. I'll call this one, John. Get a grip. Uh, if you would bear with me uh, for a minute, I think we need to have a perspective about things. Um, I think everybody needs to get a grip. <laughs> you know, media, uh, heat, players, organization, you know, all of our fans, you got to get a grip <laughs> on, on greatness and on teams. And I love it. I do too. He's going right after it, John. He's taking no prisoners. Not at all. You know, you want to build a dynasty, it takes years. It takes years, and it takes guts. It takes getting a grip. And like I said, he's pissed. Let's hear him talk now about a couple of teams. Let's start with the way he said the Lakers when he was coaching that dynasty. And I've been here, you know, for 45 years in the NBA, and I've witnessed uh, dynasties. I've wit witnessed great teams. You know, the, 80, the 80s Lakers, <laughs> Five championships in 12 years. So what does that mean? Seven times they didn't win. They didn't run. They didn't win. You got to deal with it. You got to come back. Okay, how about that? He's right. What did you just say right. when I say? He you said know, five wins. How many losses? Seven losses. But didn't break up the team. Not at all. He kept their big players, and the Heat's got to keep their big three. Well, let's see what he says about the great Celtic teams. Celtics were supposed to be a great team in the 80s. 12 years together, three wins, nine losses. How about that team? You had Parrish, McHale, uh, of course, Larry Bird. Larry Bird, yep. That was a big team, too. Big team, too. Again, they kept their core. Kept their core. And they had a guy like a Pat Riley running that organization in Red Auerbach, chomping his cigar. <laughs> right? Let's see what he said about Michael Jordan's great Bulls and Phil Jackson, the coach. Chicago Bulls from 86 to, I think, 87 to 98, uh, 11 times. In 11 years, they won six titles. That's five times that, you know, Michael Scotty and Horace Grant lost. Okay, they was talking about the great Michael Jordan and Pippen and Rodman. Did six they win titles? every year? Nope. Not win every year. I think six out of 11. Well, you could be right. You know, With so, that team? Yeah. So, again, he's saying, where are you going, LeBron? Where are you thinking of going, Dwayne Wade? Where are you thinking of going, Chris Bosh? Exactly. Yeah. I honestly don't think those guys are going anywhere. They just want to absorb this loss and get it behind them. And I'm sure the decisions will be made and they'll be back next year. Well, to jump by right back into A1 VIP Entertainment, I'm here in New York. I wanted to go to the finals, get the heat. You can take care of that for me? I can absolutely accommodate that. Okay, now if I want to meet one of those players, I'm not probably during the finals, no. but after the season, could that yes. happen? Yeah, need a few weeks in advance for something like that on occasion. But that could happen too. But then again, you know, the players could be a little finicky. If they're losing on a losing streak, they don't want to be even talked to. How them. hot was that ticket, San Antonio against uh, Miami Heat? It was a pretty good ticket. It wasn't as hot as it was last year. But it was a good ticket. It was so definitely when we a good say ticket. hot ticket, does that mean everybody wanted a ticket? And does that mean you, you as a business now, can make more money? Or the hotter the ticket, tougher for you to make money on the ticket? It is tougher to make money the hotter the ticket because the prices go up. And in order for me to get the tickets, I have to pay more. And I try to keep my prices as relatively competitive or if not better than everyone else. So I'll shave my margin a little. It's just to make the customer, you know, enjoy the, the game and, and get a value. Let's see what Pat says about the great Shaq Kobe teams. The Lakers from, I think, 96 with Shaq and Kobe to today, it's like, you know, 14 or 15 years, they won five. That means they lost 12 times. And Shaq Kobe, did they win every year? Nope. Now, how, now let's go to, again back to A1 Entertainment. Ticket in L.A. L.A. ticket, tougher ticket than in Miami, or is it the same? When they were winning? Yes. A little tougher. 
A little tougher because yeah. why? It's L.A., it's a bigger market. Bigger market, a lot of celebrities, a lot of who's who on the, on the court. Not easy to get the courtside seats, but we can get them. Of course you can get them. We know you can get them. I know that. <laughs> Everything let's, has a dollar amount. Uh, listen, it's the world we live in. Yes, it is. Let's see what he says about the uh, NBA, and I'll say defending champs because they just won last week. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Pat says about San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs in 17 years, you know, won five titles, so you add it up. What's the math there? You know, they lost 12 times. <laughs> this stuff is hard. You know, it's interesting how he has that little laugh. A lot of that little laugh, John, you know what I mean? Every time he has a little, I don't know, is that a snicker? Is a laugh? I don't even know what that is. You know, that's just Pat's way. Yeah, that's his way. He's right. And then uh, I think we're almost done. He's got a couple less things to say. Let's see what Pat, I think we just caught a little glimpse of it. He started getting into this. It's not easy. Basically saying, this stuff is hard. Let's see what Pat says. We're in the closing of what Pat has to say. And you got to stay together if you got the guts. And you don't find the first door and run out of it <laughs> if you have an opportunity. Uh, this is four years now into uh, this era, this team, four finals. It's only been done three other times before. And two championships from day one to the end, it was like a Broadway show. You know, it sort of run out of steam. And we need to retool. We don't need to rebuild. We need to retool. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so Pat started with the retool. He's going to talk a little bit about the next segment about what they need to do. You look at San Antonio last year. What they do, John? Remember, they were up two nothing, mm -hmm. right? They, they took right the first back. two games, and what the Heat do? Came back. Came right back. Won four straight. Four straight games. And San yep. Antonio was like, "What happened?" Mm -hmm. They weren't going to let that happen again. <laughs> and they weren't going to let that happen again. But what they do? Did they totally blow up the team? No, not at all. No, they nope. retooled. That's what they did. Okay, that's, that's what, what a dynasty did. does. That's what a dynasty does. I guess you and Pat, what have you been talking to Pat lately? You know, Pat's a winner, so I followed his career Pat's throughout his career. I think his book was called The Winner Within. Yeah, he's a Pat winner. Pat Riley. Wherever he went, he was a winner. Whatever he went. Let's go to Pat Riley and talk about him saying retooling the heat. I've... Uh I've been a leader and a decision maker, and that's my level of expertise. And I'll do everything I can to retool the team. But everybody just get a grip. Exactly. I mean, that's it. You know, Pat, in a nutshell. Yes, indeed. Get a grip, chill out, and I don't think he's talking to Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. He's talking straight to LeBron. LeBron and your people because he's not happy with his people chirping, which all these guys do because everyone's got to kiss their you-know-what exactly. in this world. Mm -hmm. Pat's not saying that. First thing, Pat's 69. He's, got, he's right up there, right underneath Phil Jackson with winning. All he does is win, like you say. He's a winner. Absolutely. So if he doesn't win again, Pat will live and move on. Mm -hmm. LeBron, you're the one who's chasing MJ. You're chasing the greatest player, not Pat Riley. So exactly. Pat's got his legacy. So to me, he's really talking to LeBron. I would say he's definitely pointing a finger at him, but I think more he sent that message out to LeBron so he doesn't even think about leaving. I think you're right, but LeBron is going to sit with his people and talk about where else can he go. And where can LeBron go? You know, in today's NBA, as you know, with the salary caps, I think LeBron go anywhere he wants anyhow. He's not going to want to start over. Might not, but he might want to go to a team that's got a couple of, you know, the, he's the big dad of big three. You know, what about that talking to maybe he can go to Houston? You know, Houston's got a nice team. They got James Harden. They got the big man. Yes, they got a good team. You know, they it's got Dwight. I mean, you know, if he went there, what could he do? But Pat's point is, and I think we got one more clip from Pat, is basically saying, don't bail because you didn't win this year. Let's hear the last thing that Pat Riley has to say. But what really cements it, Cements a forever bond is going through what we went through this year and staying the course. Uh, so I, I've been through that experience. <laughs> and I know other teams have been through it. We have a chance to do something significant, but losing is just as much a part of it as winning is. 
And when you're a team, you deal with it. No, there was no hugging. And there was no high-fiving. And, you know, there's just looking around the room now and finding out who's going to stand up. And this is time that you go home. My foreigner. Easy to win, John, when everything goes, when you're selling all the tickets, making all the money, right? Every, that ain't one entertainment, everybody's VIP. They got yeah. you winning, though. It's all great. It's all great. But how about when you're stuck with those tickets and you can't move them? How about that? That's when morale, when you, I'm sure, as the owner, got to go around everybody and keep them happy. Because yes, the next deal is coming. We can't worry about this deal. Not at all. We keep moving forward. So you're a big believer in Pat Riley. Oh, absolutely. I love Pat Riley. I always have. They always have. Yes. I think Phil Jackson going to the Knicks is going to be huge. It's, you know, they obviously needed a change big time. And it's a matter of time to see how far the owner can keep his nose out. Well, I think, you know, to jump on that since you brought it up, my thought process is I thought the owner was involved because I think that if Pat, I'm sorry, if Phil Jackson went to Steve Kerr right away, Steve, $5 million a year, five years, $25 million, the same contract he gave Derek Fisher instead of what we heard, three years, 15, four years, 19. Instead of playing around with Steve, I think if he went Steve, five years, $25 million, Steve Kerr would be the head coach of the New York Knickbockers. I agree with that. I agree with that. I was surprised that Phil even got a no. He's not used to getting a no. Oh, you know, so that's a great so point, right? That, Who says no to Phil? That was a concern for me. Right. For the next, right like, if, if the he next, got a no right. right out of the box, <laughs> I don't know who's who, maybe somebody doesn't want to play here. Maybe Carmelo wants to leave. I don't know. So we'll see. The Zen Master is going to have to go to work. Love the Zen Master. You know, an interesting thing you had told me off camera, and I want you to get your take on it. Staying with the basketball theme, and you being an owner of a business for many, many years, is Donald Sterling. Mm -hmm. of the L.A. Paper Clips, and I will give that credit to the great Pete Vesey, who doesn't write anymore. He used to write Hoop Du Jour in the Post. <laughs> I love Pete Vesey. Yes, like Reached Pete out Vesey. to him many times to get him on the show. And for some reason, Pete don't want to come on my show. I don't understand that. I'm not happy, but Pete, when I yeah, see Yeah, you're him, persistent. You'll get him. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. So give us your take on the Donald Sterling situation. My thoughts on that are a little out of the box. Oh, they are. But, you know, he's an old guy. I'm sure he's ready to retire and call it in. I wouldn't be surprised if he manipulated this whole thing just to what? get value on his team. Manipulated the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Why well, not? Keep going. Think about this. it. I mean, before this whole mess hit the tabloids, what was the value of his team? $250 million, $350 million? Well, I would think more than that because the Milwaukee Bucks went for five fifty. He's L.A., so it would have been more. $750. Seven but go ahead. Go ahead. What did he sell the team for? It's a $2, $2 billion. billion. Yeah. He made his team a world renowned by the controversy. Everybody jumped on the bandwagon, pulled for the Clippers to pull it out. Their TV ratings skyrocketed. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, we're just tell old book if it ever comes out. <laughs> Before he passes, right? Because he's well, in his 80s. Now, it's right? an interesting take because I know in the PR world they would say, you know, get yourself in the news, exactly. you know, sometimes not as bad as what this well, stuff is, because this is going to help, top. it's a little over the top of the brand, but you're still in the news. But then again, the great PR firms, I'm sure can get them out of them, like the great Daily Blue and Corinne mm -hmm. Cairo and our whole team. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you hire them, which you might do at A1 VIP Entertainment, you never know, yes, you never um, know. to help you along. It's amazing how quick the show goes. I want to tell you something, Johnny, all our guests get a gift card from one of our sponsors. 388, that's your card. Very cool. And you're going to be able to take your wife, your kids, your family. I don't know if you have enough room on the card for me, so, you know, enjoy it with your family. That's you, 388, one of our sponsors, 388 Willis Avenue in Roslyn, New York. I want to thank the Rampart Group for also being a sponsor of the show. I want to thank the Daily Blue, because without them, you would not be able to see me. And I want to thank my buddy. John My Anthony, pleasure, Larry. A1 Entertainment VIP. You want to meet somebody? <laughs> this is the man to do it. You can always go to our website. You can see him. We're connecting the website. You can go to sportsbizwithld.com. You go on Facebook, sportsbizwithld.com. And you can tweet me, sportsbizwithld.com. I got some friends in the studio I want to bring on. Come on, boys. 
Come in front of the camera. Hi. Let's go. Don't be shy. Yeah. Let's go. Put the camera on him if he's going to be shy on purpose. Our friend, yep. come on in. Our foreign friend from France. Okay. Anybody else want to get in the shoot? Right here. We have about 30 seconds left. Anybody else? Okay. Everybody. Sports Biz with LD. I'm your host, Larry Davis. We'll see you next week. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Sports Biz is sponsored by the Rampart Insurance Group for all your insurance needs. Special thanks to MintPros.com. Brought to you by the Daily Blue Network. Sports fans, this is Sports Biz with LD.